The Windock was built in 1959 as the Rhine-Ore in West Germany for the Navios Corporation of Monrovia, Liberia. The ship measured 546 feet in length, 73 feet in width, and 40 feet in depth. In its years of ocean service, the Rhine ore was primarily used to carry iron ore from Venezuela to Europe. But after 17 years, the vessel would change ownership. The vessel was acquired by Hull Corporation Shipping of Montreal, Quebec in late 1976. The company would rename the vessel Steelcliff Hall. The vessel would also undergo many conversions, one of them including moving the wheelhouse and accommodations to the back of the vessel. The ship would also be lengthened to 730 feet in length and widened to 75 feet in width. And on May 4, 1978, the Steelcliff Hall entered service on the Great Lakes. In the mid-1980s, Hull Corporation Shipping had financial difficulties and gave ownership of the vessel to the Royal Bank of Canada, who would operate the ship from 1986 to 1987. In 1988, another change in ownership would occur as the Steelcliff Hall was acquired by the N&M Patterson & Sons Limited Company of Thunder Bay, Ontario. The ship was renamed Windock and would be primarily used to transport iron ore and grain on the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Seaway. The ship would sail for another 13 years without any major incidents, well, that is, until August 11, 2001. On August 8, 2001, the Windock departed Thunder Bay, Ontario, with 26,023 tons of wheat bound for Montreal, Quebec, Canada, but it would only make it as far as the Welland Canal. It was past 8 o'clock p.m. on August 11th, and the Windock was sailing at around five knots near Allenburg, Ontario. The Windock was sailing towards Bridge 11 on the Welland Canal, also known as the Allenburg Bridge. The ship was then met with a flashing amber approach light, showing that the bridge operator was aware of the approaching vessel. The bridge then ascended to its full height, allowing the vessel to pass under it. Everything went along smoothly until the Windock was around halfway under the bridge. The third officer commented that the bridge signal lights were solid red, indicating that the bridge was descending right onto the Windock. The captain then began to sound the ship's whistles and called the TCC on VH Channel 14 about the descending bridge. The captain then ordered for the engines to be stopped and for a full evacuation of the wheelhouse. The captain and the third officer left the wheelhouse on the starboard navigation bridge wing, but the helmsman wouldn't make it out. Then, at 8.54 p.m., the ship rammed into the lowering Allenberg Bridge, destroying both its wheelhouse and smokestack in the process. Onlookers watched the scene in horror, hoping that everyone on board the Windock was okay. Both the captain and third officer had made it out of the wheelhouse before it was hit, but the helmsman had still been inside when the ship rammed into the bridge. But, miraculously, the helmsman had survived the collision and had freed himself from the debris and left the wheelhouse alive. Although the vessel's engines had been stopped before the collision, the ship continued to sail down the Welland Canal with only its forward momentum. The ship then caught fire and eventually grounded 800 meters away from the collision spot by the bridge. Crew members aboard the Windock frantically grabbed everything they could before exiting the vessel. Thankfully, Everyone survived the incident, and there were no serious injuries or oil pollution. But the vessel was considered a total constructive loss, although the vessel's cargo of wheat was not damaged in the collision. After the collision, the Welling Canal would be closed for two days, allowing no vessel traffic to pass through it. 
After an investigation, the bridge operator would be blamed for the incident. Controllers from the canal's traffic control center had spoken to the bridge operator both before and after the collision, and they reported that he sounded confused and was difficult to understand. These are things people typically do after inhaling alcohol. Not to mention the fact that the bridge operator said he did not remember lowering the bridge on the oncoming vessel. After two days of sitting in the Welland Canal, the Windock was towed to Hamilton, Ontario, where it unloaded only 5,000 tons of its cargo of wheat onto the Canadian provider, which then took it to Montreal. After the collision, the vessel would never truly sail again, and after 10 years of sitting idle, it was scrapped in 2011. Anyway, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one, and bye.